All right, guys, welcome back to Introduction Riding 101 here. Uh, last time I got cut off when I was bringing up different ways that you could potentially hook. Okay, remember, every introduction has to do three things. You hook, you explain, you direct. With the hook, you can start with a quote. If it's relevant and it's blended, you can startle um, by presenting something that might catch them off guard. Uh, again, has to be relevant, has to be blended, has to be true. Uh, and the last thing that you could potentially do is actually paint a picture. And this is something I think works really, really well if you use it effectively. Okay, I want to make sure I start a timer so I don't lose uh, lose you guys again here. So what we could do here is actually start with some kind of like anecdote or some kind of story. Uh, so instead of giving me just like a direct quote or um, maybe like pulling up some kind of startling information, you could take us into the situation. Let's say that you're writing about um, like a concentration camp in Nazi Germany. Instead of giving a statistic about how many people uh, died in that camp or how many people were taken captive in that camp, what you could do instead is take us into the situation that they were in. Draw us in by painting that picture, by giving us some kind of description where you are putting us into the eyes of somebody in that, that concentration camp. You're then going to go straight into your explanation point but instead of us just having information given to us, we, we, we're starting to feel something. Now, here's the danger that you need to keep in mind when you use the painting option. First of all, you're drawing us into the topic, but length is still an issue. Okay, You really don't want your hook to last more than about like two to three sentences. With something like this, you could probably allow yourself more like three to four, but still, it's got to be pretty quick. So you should not do this if one you're terrible at creative writing because if your um, description is bad it's going to ruin your introduction but if it's good man it's going to elevate it so much right um you also should not do this if you can't pull that off in three to four sentences but doing something like that in a college composition class is exactly the place where you're going to play around with that kind of writing okay because i can help you get to that point i'm not saying i'm an expert but i i, I guess i am kind of in that field. <laughs> and so I definitely would love to do it. It's something I've used effectively before. In fact, the most boring essay that I've ever written in my entire life was for from for one of my favorite classes that I took in college. It was a meteorology class I was randomly put in, ended up really loving the teacher, ended up going really well. But we had to draw topics and we were all like picking these topics literally out of a hat. Okay. So he was passing around this hat. We were drawing these topics and everybody else was pulling out like these weather storm kind of topics. And I got, I got ice. Okay. So I asked him, I so like, am I supposed to write like ice storms or what am I supposed to do? And he said, no, it's just, just ice. Okay. And so this was like a 10 page single space essay just on ice. Okay. So definitely not the most riveting information that, that I've ever had to present in my entire life. But what I started with was this like descriptive topic where I painted a picture of how ice directly impacted an individual. Okay. And then I used that to feed in and it was by far the only good part about essay. Okay. But, uh, it was something that was fun and got, got people's attention and it drew them in. So that's what a hook is supposed to accomplish. Okay. So you can quote, you can startle, you can paint whatever you do though, pull them in. Then once you have them in, try and keep them. Okay. So that's the other thing that you want to understand is that the next place you're going to take them is to the, what am I about to read that explain portion. And so if you've worked so hard to write this incredible hook, don't leave them hanging. Okay. Um, don't end up like dragging out and giving them everything else that the essays are all going to be about. Cause then they don't need to read your essay. Okay. Give them just the necessary information that they need in order to understand what this is going to be about and then go on to your thesis statement. Okay. So don't ruin it by saying, giving them everything. Don't ruin it by saying things like in this essay, we will, that is bad writing. Plus it's just redundant. Like you were reading your essay, like where else are you going to tell us about this? Okay. Um, so you've got them in, don't lose them, give them just the main things that they need. So like, let's say you're writing about a book. You don't need five sentences to give me a summary of a book. You probably need one. Okay. We'll allow you two to four, but you don't need a lot of space for that. Give us the main things, move on to your thesis statement. Okay. So you're going to hook, you're going to explain. And the last thing you're going to do is direct, which we will pick that up in the next video. Okay. All right, guys, have a great day. Make wise decisions. I will see you probably really, really soon in the next video. Merry Christmas. How do I stop this thing? You guys can watch me stumble for a second. <laughs>